Welcome to our show. Join us as we escape the 9 to 5 and begin our journey as entrepreneurs. Hi, I'm Josiah and this is Kelly Nagel and we're entrepreneurs in the last frontier, the great state of Alaska. We'll release a new podcast every Wednesday. Welcome back. Happy Wednesday. Um, we're praying you guys are having a wonderful day so far. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. Last episode, we talked about why we're doing this podcast. Um, we briefly covered like who we are, what we're basically doing, but we're going to go more in depth today or right now. Um, but last week, last week, you, I think you asked me, what does mm-hmm. entrepreneurship mean? And I realized, we realized we didn't actually have the definition. So I pulled out our handy dandy Webster's, right? Webster's Dictionary. Uncle Webster. Nobody Uh uses these anymore. (laughs) Let's see. This is a a second college edition. Found this somewhere. I wonder what year this one was published. So this this could be wrong. Maybe they've changed the definition. Hopefully not. Let's see. Let's see. Hmm. 1980? Uh-oh. <laughs> I think that's right. No, I think that's right. Yeah. Looks like 1980. Okay. So, well, it's gonna do be you like, want to read entrepreneurship? It's going to be old English. What is an here. entrepreneur? Oh, you, you got, got it? it. Okay. You're better at reading. Okay. <laughs> I'm better at reading. Okay. Entrepreneur. It is obviously a noun. Okay. If you weren't sure. It is a person who organizes and manages a business undertaking, assuming the risk of the sake of the profit, for the sake of the profit, excuse me. Um, Not like profit, like PH, profit from the Bible, like profit, like P-R-O-F-I-T, in case you were wondering. I know that can be kind of confusing. We're not profits. So just to be clear about that. (laughs) I wasn't confused about that, but thanks for clarifying. Um, yeah, so we thought we'd pull out the definition of entrepreneur because we realized we were like, we had our own thought on what entrepreneur meant. We were like, wait, we should have that definition. So we pulled it out. So I guess we are entrepreneurs. Maybe. We're organizing something and it is probably a risk. Yeah. It's funny. (laughs) Yeah. So I guess we'll start with our first topic for this podcast. Um, what are we doing specifically in entrepreneurship? Like what are our endeavors? Um, yeah. So I guess what we've done before, or I guess somewhat have been currently doing, but not really anymore. We have been tutoring. Well, excuse me. I've been tutoring. I was running a tutoring business, um, specifically for about a, I think it was about a year, school year. I was doing Mm -hmm. homeschool classes, um, with a homeschool group locally in Anchorage, Alaska, in case you're wondering where we're located. And then I moved on to just doing private tutoring. At the time, I was also doing some private tutoring. um, But then I just moved to completely solely private tutoring because I was pregnant. And I thought, you know, I can't continue doing these classes, especially because his due date was January. That would be in the middle of the school year. So we decided let's leave somebody else to teaching those classes for that school year. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, For anyone in a similar industry or thinking about tutoring, it's pretty easy to set up legal wise with the IRS and and government. Uh, You did it just as a sole proprietor. Yep. Probably about what? 15 minutes of paperwork and, Probably, maybe, uh, not even. <laughs> what's the Alaska business license pretty affordable? Was it? Yeah, I think they're, if I'm not mistaken, 50 for sole yeah, proprietors. Yeah, I think less than, yeah, 50 or for less the for the year. And, yeah. um, and then, you can you can go ahead and buy a two-year one, at least for the state of Alaska. A two-year one is 50 per year. So it's not like you save any money, but mm-hmm. you might save some time. You don't have to go back and redo paperwork. And taxes aren't too difficult if you're trying to do them yourself you can still do it. i did it that first year it's yeah, uh, you did. sole proprietor still all under your social security number there's yep. not a separate business entity taxes wise so yeah anyway we're getting off topic though 
<laughs> but we were, so we were doing, to, or I was doing tutoring as a sole proprietor. I've noticed, especially after having a baby, that diving into that more in depth, um, specifically just tutoring, not teaching homeschool classes, that was not possible for us. It just, it takes too, too much time away from our son and from the house specifically. So I did try to switch to online tutoring and that sadly did not go well this semester. Now it's been a little weird up here in Anchorage because, um, they were doing completely online classes and then they were talking about going back into school. They switched from a semester-long class to quarter-long classes, Mm -hmm. and they were talking about, I think it was supposed to be this past week, if not the week before, they were supposed to go back into school, or at least elementary students were supposed to go back into school for quarter two, but they did not. So it's just been a little weird. I think people, on top of that, financially may not be able to afford tutoring right now, or I have no idea. I I didn't look into it too in-depth. I put some marketing out there. Um, I, I did get some feedback and some want, but realizing how much, I don't know, time away from Luke and how much we'd have to pay for a babysitter potentially, or you'd have to pull away from your business endeavors. Right, right. Then it just became too much. So I basically decided that if I offer tutoring, it'll just be kind of like, just like you can offer babysitting. Like, you know, you just like go offer some babysitting hours, but you don't have to like have a business license, have this whole setup. Like it's not that big a deal. I'll I'll still offer tutoring if people want it, but not necessarily like as a business per se. Right. Right. That's interesting how schools have reacted. What what are comment below what schools in your area are doing? And if you, it's interesting how businesses related to that, like tutoring or daycare or after school programs or sports programs, how they how they are managing and reacting to what the local governments and organizations are doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, you know, you just gotta think differently and do things differently. Which is so it, it can be it can be hard. That can be definitely hard for people. Yeah. Speaking of businesses struggling in twenty twenty. <laughs> Uh, oh, <laughs> another another business that we had really big hopes and dreams for um, was our travel agency. Yes, yes. Uh, we were taking a bit of a different <sighs> approach than most <laughs> travel agencies. I think most that I've seen, they you go to them, you say, "Hey, I want to go to the Bahamas." You get with a travel agent; they'll help you set up the whole trip, get you the best deal, may or may not may or may not charge you a fee based off of what their business model is and then they'll help you do that or and they're typically local like so we live in anchorage so we get a travel agent who lives in anchorage to book us something for the Bahamas. right go, go down to their office peruse their brochures and then we'd be on a cruise ship before you know it right we were we were trying to do something a little different in that we were trying to specialize in Alaska travel. So anyone looking to visit, vacation, recreate in Alaska, we would be the go-to business for that and yeah. organize specifically travel arrangements, lodging, and stuff like fishing, ATV tours, et cetera, et cetera. Fun stuff. We definitely had a, you know decent amount of interest and some clients and had high hopes for this travel season. Um, Alaska vacation travel is very seasonal. No one wants to come in the winter. <laughs> there's there's a few. There's a few. Yeah, there, there's, there's definitely still things yeah. to do in the winter, but most people, yeah. when you're making a big, it can be costly, Yeah, a uh, trip like that, you want to come to a place like Alaska in the warmest time of year. And what? When we were doing our research... What was that number again? Was it like 70% of tourists to Alaska come by cruise ship or something? That's right. Yeah. 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 They come by a cruise ship. Um, so, you know, that's huge, especially now, obviously, the cruise ships all are <laughs> yeah, <so, laughs> not running. <laughs> yeah. That that part of that business um, didn't do so great 
for a number of reasons. One, people traveling less in general. Yeah. And two, Anchorage specifically and Alaska as a whole has been pretty restrictive on travel rules this year, especially this summer. So some of the the customers we had, it didn't pan out and we're kind of taking a step back from that as there's a lot of uncertainty, I think, even for next year Yeah. with vacation travel in that industry. Another part of that business we wanted to, we were uh, doing research and trying to get into was kind of the Airbnb Mm -hmm. uh, short-term vacation rental side of that. And uh, we still have some some plans in the future to hopefully get into that. Might be a little farther out. Um, But yeah, that was that. We organized that one as a LLC full out. And um, that's a little trickier to to set up. A little more work, a little more uh, money to put up for the organization and the government, as well as when it comes tax time, if you're working with a CPA or tax professional, it's a little little more work for them. So those are our, have we done any other, any other official businesses in the last couple of years? I think that's mostly it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. And then um, what, what have we done that we're still doing now? Well, uh, we're doing e-commerce. That's a big one that you started. When was that? Back two years ago? Mm-hmm. I wonder oh, if that... Dabbled. You dabbled a little bit. Do you think e-commerce is in this 1980 Ooh. Webster's Dictionary? <laughs> that, that might Doubt be questionable. It. Let's take a look. <laughs> we're close. Where are you at? Hmm... I don't... Ecclesiology. Mm. Nope, I'm, I I'm not seeing it. That's surprising. Hmm. Weird. The We'd internet, have to look at a local. The internet hasn't been around forever? <laughs> 1980s right. dictionary. So hey. e-commerce, that can mean all sorts of different things. In our case, it's primarily selling hard goods yep. on a couple different marketplaces. Uh, so we find most of the items locally, whether they're new or used, and we uh, use some different methods to list, pack, prep, ship, yep. etc. There's some many great platforms out there for selling, uh, and we primarily use established ones, mostly Amazon and eBay. Um, there's tons more if you're interested in it. I know there's uh, Poshmark, there's Mercari. Yeah. There's you can even sell and ship mm-hmm. things through Facebook. People have e-commerce stores built yeah. on Instagram, even the TikTok now. Yeah. People are doing <laughs> that. So for us, Amazon and eBay is what we're focusing on. Yeah. That's. And it's been going well, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What what uh, kind of items? We have quite a variety. Basically, anything that'll make money, right? Yeah, basically. <laughs> but really focused, most of the inventory is books. Yeah. Uh, mostly used books. A lot of textbooks, educational niches, hobbies, um things like that and doing pretty well with that and it's definitely one thing we learned this year is kind of especially if you're a business owner diversify a bit because you never know what could happen no one would have ever put in their business plan a year ago what are we going to do if the government says yeah you can't travel or if the government says you can't go to your restaurant and so businesses or even open you can't have your doors open yeah businesses that weren't able to adapt or diversify their yeah. revenue streams are really struggling and so i mean we can see that even just with your big major players like target walmart uh lowe's like i know or even our local grocery store called fred meyer um mm-hmm. it's a what would you call it 
sister company or I guess they're owned by or whatever, run by Kroger. So if you have a Kroger, similar. King Supers, <laughs> same, same company. Fred Meyer at the time, they started just over a year ago, a um, year, year and a half ago, maybe two. Um, doing what they called at the time Clicklist, which was, which was a separate company, and now they just call it Fred Meyer Pickup. And so now all the stores, like right. you saw all those pop up, like you saw a couple stores starting to do it. I think Target may have had it a little bit pick up, maybe some drive up. But now all the stores, if they had just like maybe two, three, four spots, now they've got like six to ten spots out front. Oh yeah, um, big time. Normally, like I, I think our local Lowe's had like four spots but then now they've made it like 10 or something Mm -hmm. um which is like they're adapting they're adapting to what people want which is like okay i need these items but i'm I'm not willing to go into the store and especially in alaska a lot of people don't want to wait for shipping or can't wait for shipping because it can take even amazon what like seven days something like that yeah five 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 days amazon prime (laughs) five to seven days in alaska yeah so so sometimes i mean that's huge like you got to adapt um and yeah if you're not willing to i mean that's when i mean we can we can talk about like what sears in general right I mean, what? They were around the 1980s from the dictionary. Yeah. They might be labeled in the dictionary. They're I don't probably know. in here. Sears, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, which is not. I'm not. I'm not going to rag on Sears like they were a terrible store, but they weren't willing to adapt either. So I mean, there comes a point where you got to like learn to adapt and figure out what the market wants. Right. Right. Yeah. So we kind of accidentally learned that <laughs> with our travel agency based business failing and our e commerce based business taking leaps and bounds yes. and doing much better than we ever planned. And right. Weren't we talking like, oh, we'll just keep doing this on the side? Yeah. Like smaller, Definitely. not really big. And now that's become our number one. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's shopping online. Uh, internet shopping is not going anywhere. And I think a lot of people this year that were maybe skeptical of shopping online, even things like ordering groceries or ordering clothing, I think a lot of people have been forced to try it. And Mm -hmm. so I think that e-commerce industry is growing and will continue to do so for a long time. For sure. Yeah, that's huge. You have to. You have to. Be dabble in the internet scheme a little bit, <laughs> I guess. Well, it's not a, it's not a pyramid oh, scheme. It's not a scheme. Excuse me, scheme is the wrong word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, what else are we doing? Well, I guess this podcast, kind of. Well, we're not making money. <laughs> Nobody's watching us. Um, Maybe someday. But we're at least doing it. That's what I mean. Yeah, just sure, recording it. Sure. Um. And obviously, this is on YouTube, so if you see us, you know, hey, what's up? <laughs> what's up? Um, Are we famous yet? Maybe. <laughs> Episode two. Um. Yeah, I mean, that's basically it. My, or do you have a business on the side I'm not aware of? What you're referring <laughs> we'll to? We'll talk about it later. <laughs> no. Um. Yeah, I think we've we've always had a desire to try YouTube or podcasts, a way to share some of our passions and our adventures and our story. So we're giving this a try and yeah, we'll see how it goes and how, how far this takes us. And we have tons and tons of other business ideas that we want to try in the future. So hopefully we will be able to do, you know, at least a small percentage of those and share how they go. Yeah. We just, it's like every day we're like, oh, what if we did this? Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. But, you know, you can't start a new business every day. (laughs) We're definitely the idea people. (laughs) We're like throwing ideas at each other all the time. Yeah, which is great. What if we did this? What if we like, you know, did add this to that and did this? Which is fun. Mm -hmm. It's just how how God made us. But it is kind of like, okay, you definitely put that in perspective for me. Uh, maybe about a year or two ago. Like, okay, these ideas are all great, and maybe they will come to fruition. But at some point, we can't do it all. We have a finite amount of time, so 
let's, you know, focus right. on one thing at a time and add and grow slowly from yeah. there. We could probably do 20 businesses really poorly yes. and just lose money. Or we could pick a couple, yeah. focus on them big time yeah. and have some successes and then uh, maybe move on to other stuff later on. Yeah, so. that'd be fun. We'll see. What else? What's next? All right. We're going to try a new segment here. Funny lessons learned. Oh, gosh. So, yeah. <laughs> Some of these will be kind of business related. Some of these, uh, I don't know, maybe time management or yeah. other related lessons. Yeah. So, anyone else who does eBay e-commerce kind of in particularly, you probably have tried to go into thrift stores in your area looking for different products to flip. Uh, so I, I spend a decent amount of time in thrift stores looking for different items. Uh, or fun stuff for us. Yeah, or, or, <laughs> or for personal shopping. I, I tend to spend a decent amount of time there sourcing books. That's yeah. one of the ways I source books. And I run into lots of interesting people. I have lots of interesting conversations and overhear lots of interesting conversations. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So oh I challenge you, if you have the desire, just go hang out in your local dusty thrift store for a couple hours and people watch. And maybe it's a little different too because you normally like, okay, if people are walking into Walmart or their local grocery store, like, it tends to be loud in, like, or you can't really hear people as well. Like, you have to be fairly close to hear people. Unless, obviously, people are, like, screaming or something. But, like, you know, that random tantrum in the back of the store sure, or something. Yeah, but, yeah. but, like, I feel like maybe where the story is going is, like, thrift stores end up being kind of quieter. Even if they have music, you can kind of hear people. Like, you can just kind of, like, I don't know. It's easier to hear yeah, people. Maybe, maybe sound carries a little better. Um, so a, a week or two ago, I was in a thrift store, um, and I, I usually wear headphones, listen to some music, listen to a podcast or a book, or, you know, just kind of block out the noise around me. Find if I wear headphones, people yeah. are maybe a little less willing to try to start a conversation with me. And I don't go to thrift stores to... Purposely ignore people, but I'm not trying to have conversations. Yeah. I'm there, you know, trying to get some work done. Um, so I, I heard an interesting conversation happening. A, a gentleman on his phone, so I popped a popped the earphone out. It's like a <laughs> snoop a listen. I never saw this guy. I don't know where he was in the store, but as you're saying, the sound was kind of traveling. And he was on the phone. He wasn't very happy. And he was talking to, I believe, his employer. And the conversation went something like this. He was he was being told that he needed to go get a test that day, a, uh, a COVID test. So I, I don't know what other areas in the U.S. Yeah. are requiring, but here for some industries and some businesses, they require you to get a test if you're going to certain parts of the state or... Maybe one of his coworkers had tested positive, so they're making yeah. everybody test. This guy wasn't too happy. It was his day off. Yeah, and he was being told he had to go get a test ASAP. So the conversation went back and forth, him not being happy, saying, no, he's not going to do it at all. And eventually he agreed, yeah, he'll do it sometime today. And, well, his employer was like, no, you need to go do it ASAP. To which this man responds... I'll do it today when I'm able to, but right now I'm at the eye doctor <laughs> No, and I'm trying to get this taken <laughs> care of. And I look around to see if anyone else heard this because I wasn't at the eye doctor. I was at a dusty thrift store. Oh gosh. No. I felt sorry for the guy having to go get a test on his day off, but then when he lied... Yeah. Said, told, yeah. His, told his employer he was at the eye doctor. It's like, come on, man. Oh, God. Come on, man. Don't do I that. Thought, yeah, Don't do pretty that. Pretty humorous. Uh, That's pretty funny. 
he said eye doctor. Yeah, he was at the eye doctor. He Were was you at the eye get, doctor? I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe that's why you needed to go to the eye doctor. Maybe, you couldn't maybe see. Maybe I, maybe I, yeah, maybe I'm the goofy one in the story. Oh god! That, yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah. I also get, yeah, a lot of people interrupt me and think I work at the store. Yeah, it happens usually a couple times a week. Because you know where you're going. Yeah, because I act like yeah. I belong there. I spend too much time in some of these places, and I usually have a cart full of things, so they think I'm stocking the shelves. <laughs> I'll be like, uh, uh, excuse me, sir. Like, where can I find a book on ancient geology? Like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Yikes. And, and I usually just play along and pretend that I do work there, and I That's try fun. to give them a legitimate answer. And and like, yeah, yeah probably sixty percent of the time they don't know any better, and they they think I do work there. The other 40% of the time, they kind of realize, like, oh, wait, this is awkward. You don't work here. And they get kind of, like, embarrassed and apologize and then, like, sneak away. Yeah. Pretty funny. <laughs> it's like when, uh, I know, growing up, I think my mom and I both would mm -hmm. do, like, the, you walk in Target and they always had red polos with khakis on. And somebody oh, would right, accidentally right. have, like, a red shirt with, like, khaki shorts or pants mm -hmm. or something. And you'd be like, oh, like, automatically, okay, target employee, and you might try to talk to them. That's probably a similar scenario. I, which is yeah, funny, because yeah. it's not like you're, like, wearing, like, whatever, no, or, like, no. a certain uniform. I don't even know. Do the thrift stores have uniforms? They, some Sometimes of them, they have, have vests, like, a, yeah, right? like, a, like, a vest, maybe a, a lanyard with a name tag or something. Have you seen that video? This was years oh, ago. you talking about Target and their uniform best buy very similar i think it's okay. kind of khakis and a blue polo and then like maybe a name tag or a small logo there was this guy oh no or like <laughs> it might have been a big group they all dressed up like that no and they went into a best buy and were kind of like acting as employees walking no. around like Offering to help customers. Oh my god! Playing the whole part, pretty funny. They eventually got kicked out of the store at some point. <laughs> You're like, gonna have to link that like, video. Below. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to find it and I'll, I'll link it in the description. That was years ago. Oh my goodness, I haven't seen that. Really you have funny. To show it to me. Yeah, I want to say he organized. He had kind of like a flash mob. He organized like a bunch of people, <laughs> and they met up in the parking lot, and then they just. Walked ran in. into the store. So it'd be everywhere you turned, there'd be someone who looked like an employee. That was like 90% of the Did, people how in the long, store. Do you know how long it took? The like the actual employees to figure uh, it out? You know, I... Obviously, it was a long enough video for That's them about to, like, all figure I it remember out. about it. We're going to have to look it up. I'll oh definitely, I'll definitely link That's that. That's funny. Very funny. That's very yeah, creative. Yeah. All right, well... Oh, What's gosh. your story? I... Oh, this one. Oh, what was... It? We're supposed to be talking about lessons learned. Okay, what's the lesson you learned? Um, <laughs> hold on. Okay, Dress so, less yeah. like store employees. Is that... Yeah, well, I, I know definitely one lesson I've learned is... Uh, and I figured this out in college. If you don't want people to approach you and start a conversation... Oh, my goodness. You can uh, use certain... Just don't look approachable. I'm not saying, I'm not saying look, look mean and grumpy. Uh, you didn't do this to me. Yeah, in no, no. I, I did it when I was walking around campus because I oh, wanted people okay, to okay. move out of my way yeah. so that I could get to where I was trying to get to. I wasn't trying to have conversations. So don't, don't smile. Don't smile. This is good, this is good advice. Face. Don't, have, don't smile. Have a serious face. Um, act like. You're in charge. Right. That's going to go over. <laughs> you know, kind of, I, I don't know how else to describe it. You're but, just very serious. And you just like knew yeah. where you were going. You went there. Yeah. That was it. And yes, he was not that way. No. He was not that way at all. Not that, that worried. Way. One of my friends in particular was, anyway, that's a different story. You have to do uh, another life yeah, lesson. Yeah, maybe that be different. The next so, time. Wear headphones. You can use body language to make yourself less approachable if you don't Why are want. Are we teaching people to be less approachable? No, these are, these are good. These are good lessons learned. <laughs> do oh not, do not talk to strangers. Don't talk to strangers. Act unapproachable by yeah. having a. But serious okay, face. okay, all right. Here's here's a 
No, but you're here's a, a here's a here's a you're better a lesson girl. learned. All right, you don't like those. We'll throw those out. Here's a better lesson learned. Okay, okay. If you're gonna be on the phone in public, <laughs> just remember other people can hear you. Yeah. And especially if you put them on speaker or something. Yeah, yeah, but I, most More people's like- tendency when they're talking on the phone is they start talking louder. This is true. I do it too. This is true. Because you want to make sure the person on the other end can hear you. Yeah. Et cetera. So I've definitely overheard lots of people in stores having uh, personal medical conversations with their doctor, (laughs) which I think is really (laughs) weird. Really? Really weird. Yeah, yeah. And That's very awkward. So yeah, you know, if you're if you're taking a phone call when you're out in public, just be mindful that everyone around you can hear what you're saying. Yeah. If you're gonna lie about where you are, <laughs> I mean, I guess the guy got away with it. So <laughs> not not saying he should have, but uh, no, he should not have done that. <laughs> now now his story is gonna be on the internet, and who knows? This is awkward. Who knows? This is now awkward. Who knows what could happen? If you know that gentleman, share this video <laughs> to his employer. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Don't I don't. Do e- that. I don't even know what the guy looks Maybe like. Just I never saw him. Encourage him to not lie. But yeah. well, let's okay. just like encourage him, teach him. Like he doesn't have to tell like a lie in saying that. Just yeah, he could have just left it with, "Okay, employer, I will do it as soon as possible." Now, should he have actually done it as soon as possible? Yes, but like he was deciding not to. So that's between him and his employer. But to straight up lie about where he was, that was like too far. Too far. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I I think we scraped the lesson learned out of that story. Um. Yeah. I, oh, this my lesson learned from this. What you got? I I realized earlier when I was asking you if I told this story to you before you did not know. So if you're not aware, Josiah and I met in college, but this is from my freshman year, and we did not know each other my freshman year. I didn't know that either. And. <laughs> Okay, so freshman year, I, well, for three years of college, I played lacrosse, um, which I guess another life lesson later, diff- not not for now, but freshman year, I was playing lacrosse, okay. and I think this was spring season, so during different seasons, we had like the fall semester or spring semester, we had different times for practice. Whatever morning this was, it was an early morning practice, like Practice, not lift, not conditioning, actual practice. Okay. And we, oh gosh, me and my roommate, we lived on, if you remember East Campus, Mm -hmm. it was like an apartment style, three bedroom style. So it was just me and one roommate in one room. And we had a couple other teammates in a different room. Well, somehow I was normally the one to set the alarm. And I think we somehow, like, both me and my roommate had, like, phone alarms, too, or something. But I had, like, an actual alarm clock. An actual alarm clock. And I normally set it. Okay. I had gone to bed way early that night. Like, we're talking well before 10. I think it was somewhere between 8 and 10 p.m. Because the night before, I had only gotten, like, an hour and a half of sleep. Nice. Hour and a half of sleep. Do you remember our um, computer science teacher? Oh, so yeah, that's we're, why you we're not going to use that. But Nightmares. I had a C plus <laughs> plus test. If you know what that is, it's coding, and it was C the only plus plus. yeah C plus plus. Some good and bad memories. Um, and I had this class and had a really tough test. Literally, only got an hour and a half sleep. Okay. We'll just say I don't recommend that. That's a life lesson. Don't don't get an hour and a half sleep. It doesn't go well. Um. But so the following night, I was like, I'm exhausted. I'm going to go to bed early, well before 10. It was like somewhere between 8 and 10. But I passed out. Must not have set the alarm. And my roommate eventually came in at probably a reasonable time, 10. I don't know. She fell asleep too. We didn't set alarms. Totally did not realize. Yikes. So I wake up, or but one of us wakes up, and we... We'll look at the clock and we both go, it's whatever time it was. I think our practice was at like seven, but really okay. you had to be there at like 630 to start like warm ups or something 
or, you know, warm ups, all that sort of stuff for like 30 minutes ahead. And I remember like looking at the clock and it was like seven. And I was like, yikes. Uh Well, my teammate, so my roommate, she, she was injured at the time. And so she was able to just like, we were like, oh my gosh, we are like sprinting around our room, just like throwing things, just like trying to get dressed and stuff for like practice. Cause it's like semi cold. It was like early spring. Mm-hmm. Um, oh my gosh, it was a nightmare. So she was able to like quickly get down. She had an injury. So she was able to just like put on sweat, sweat, like sweats, run out. Maybe not run, because I don't know. I can't remember if it was her leg or something that was injured. But, like, nicely get down there. I, on the other hand, was still out of practice. So I was like, I got to get shoes on. I got to get, like, my teeth brushed somewhat. So I'm, like, in <laughs> trying to get my shoes on okay. and, like, brushing my teeth just because. At the same on, time, how do you do? I don't know what I did. I was running around the room. Shoes on I don't know. What, I think I grabbed my toothbrush and was running around trying to, because I had to wear a mouth guard. I was like, get your mouth guard all gross. It just gets bad. Ugh. Okay. So you got to clean that somewhat often. I don't know if sure. I really did. But, you know, we'll leave it there. I'm running around. I have to sprint to locker room and it's like not even a half mile probably to get Uh-oh. to like from so like i'm sprinting mind you around my room sprinting down to the locker room to grab my stick yep didn't change into cleats grab my penny like i had like really not good sold sneakers on so okay. it was like not grippy at all so i'm like sprinting around grabbing my stick goggles mouth guard and penny that was and all your, i needed and that was slippers it. basically no it, they were like <laughs> they were not they were like what you'd call like fashionable sneakers like you know like they're not like completely not so had like, no grips but they like a little sparkly had heels exactly they had sparkles and heels no they, they were not sparkles and heels. light up light up sketchers <laughs> velcro oh gosh no 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 but it they, I, I honestly think i still have that pair of sneakers that's funny okay so what happened so i went to like ran out to practice and like the, my teammates were all finishing, I think they normally did like, I think we did stretches beforehand and then we did a warm up lap. And I think they were finishing their warm up lap. And I was like, gosh, so mind you, I'm still sprinting this entire time. And I'm like, S- like at this point, I'm like, okay, so should I slow jog around like a warm up jog around the lap? Should I go do my stretches? Like I had no idea what to do. Okay. So I'm like halfway around the field in this like sprint jog speed. Cause I was like, I don't know what speed to go. Do you try to, like, hurry as you're, like, I'm so late? Because uh-huh. it's very clear I was late. It's not like, oh, where's Kelly? Oh, I've been here the whole time. It's like, oh, Kelly just ran in. Yeah. So yeah. was it normal for you to show up late? or were you there? No, normal this was time? not normal. Okay, well, what happened? And we're talking, like, very late. So I think, you, you I were think... really awkward in getting across the field to where the group was yeah and then i was like i don't know do i stretch do i not do i, uh-huh. I don't even know what to do i had no idea what to do and Fired. i'm like half awake at this point i think i think the captains maybe came and talked to me okay and then definitely the coaches Off called the team. <laughs> and then the coaches called me over and i think i had i did i ended up doing some sort of like print punishment like, but i think it was again literally i think it was literally Blue that line again miracle comment quote. below oh man oh i left it, it i gave it away <laughs> great movie miracle watch <laughs> it uh, cool story we've been there anyway um Blue yeah, line so, again all right where were you yeah so i was supposed to do some sort of like punishment but i think it was me and then the other a couple of my other teammates that were also in that like apartment okay because now, I will say this. I don't think they realized, like, we weren't awake when they left. Like, I, I think they assumed, like, we were up and stuff. Oh, and, so like, they ditched you. Okay, so the coaches like, gave them a punishment, too, because, like, they shouldn't have ditched us. But I really don't think that was the case. Oh, I just They showed up, and they were probably like, where's, where's Kelly? And I'll say, just leave it at roommate. So you did a bunch of sprints. Oh, yeah. I was exhausted. I, I couldn't finish them. I think I, like, but I had to do it at a certain time. So I think you had to go to, like, one line. Then you had to jog back and get the rest of the minute to, like, rest. But jog back and have the rest of the minute. Oh, uh, So I you had you. to, like, yeah, so you had yeah. a minute and you had to do it, however, get to a certain line at, I don't know, whatever many seconds. Okay. And then you 
had to jog back and you could rest the rest of the minute. So the slower you sprinted, the less recovery In the slower you jog back. Had. Yeah. Ooh, it was, it was, well, we'll yeah, just say, like, I, I think I had to get, like, I don't even know, like 10 or something. Maybe 15. I don't know how many it was. It was so, enough to make it so difficult. Like, I passed, like, a few of them. But at this point, mind you, I've still been sprinting, haven't stretched. Were you ever late again? Oh, most definitely not. You don't need we to stretch. set that alarm every single time. I think we set more alarms after that. We set like 15 alarms. Stretching isn't needed. Oh gosh, yes it is. Well, you <laughs> clearly so you clearly did fine that day. No, to be honest, I'll, I'll even side note this. I did not pass them on my own. I think I passed maybe half of them and my teammates were very sweet and came and like literally cuz mind you, we're I think 20, 30, halfway through practice, something like that. And I'm still not able to pass them. Because at some point, like, it got to the end of the minute and one of my other injured teammates was, like, timing it. Because obviously the coaches aren't going to, like, spend the time to sit over there. Mm-hmm. And you were thinking about how you could get injured. <laughs> so you could just be sitting there with the stopwatch. No! No. No. That was not, that's not a fun thing. You okay. want to play lacrosse. You uh, you want to play. Seemed like she was doing all right that morning. Oh, gosh. she No, but I felt bad. Like... She felt bad, and then, like, she was like, okay, you got to go again. And I wasn't even back to that final line, but I was done. I was like, I can't. Like, I couldn't even breathe at this point. I think I ended up laying on the ground, like, barely breathing. And then she was like, she didn't know what to do. She's like, so do I, like, stop the stopwatch? She kept going. <laughs> you weren't even <laughs> done. She's like, blue line, again. 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 <laughs> again. You're like, I can't, coach. I, I can't. can't. Literally couldn't breathe. Yeah. But my, co- my then a couple teammates came over and physically like pushed me, like physically pushing my back to like finish. And I finished eventually. I shouldn't say I. We finished. So like the whole team had to come over no, and no, no, pick no. you up <laughs> and carry you back and forth. Basically, no. I mean, I was running. They got they a wheelchair and they pushed me. you in it. It was. Let's just say it was the most embarrassing. Like, it was awful. I hated that. I don't even know why I'm telling this. I just told this to the internet. I never, I never heard this story. You did not. So, you're not Usain Bolt. I am not Usain <laughs> Bolt. I don't mind. See, see, here's the difference. I don't mind sprints. I don't like the sprints and then jog back thing and long distance. You love long distance. You could run mm-hmm. miles and miles and be fine. I'm like, I'm dying over here. I'd rather do a sprint yeah. and just stand there and, like, relax and then, like, well, sprint were, again. You were doing sprints. But it was, like, recover. How do you call that? Like, recovery? Like, you had to sprint and then jog back. It was nonstop. Yeah. Basically. Okay. I don't like the nonstop. It's not me. I, I can't, like, I can't only really imagine. I don't think I've. So what's the I could never, thing? like, run, a, like, for an hour straight. Two hours straight. It's not hard. It is hard. It's You're like, crazy. I just started running and I couldn't stop. stop. <laughs> Who was that? Name, oh. that? name that movie. I named that, yeah. <laughs> I won't tell that, that time. Once you get started, there's like this mental block in your head. Your body's like, oh, I can't do it anymore. I can't, I can't. But he had like that runner's high. You should have talked to me. You should have been my motivational speaker freshman year. You should have. Too bad I didn't know you. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty not that... pessimistic. I probably would have told you to quit. <laughs> You're terrible. You're terrible. Like, you clearly aren't athletic enough for this. You should just give up. Really? Is that what you would have said? Probably. Do you still think that? You think that about me? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we should talk about that off camera. Um. um so... <laughs> What was the lesson? Don't join the U.S. track and field team? Don't join the U.S. track and field team. Don't be a marathon runner. No long distance. If you're going to run, just do, like, sprint a distance, chillax after. No. So the lesson is don't run. Don't run. Not a big running fan. Don't run. Walk. Walk. (laughs) Slogan of this video. I don't know what that means. Um... Lesson. The lesson I learned, definitely set your alarm. Set your alarm. For sure. One. That's literally step number one. That's it. Like, that's your main lesson. And you get it like, yeah, we should. You get 
you know, you could get consequences. Mm -hmm. I definitely got a consequence. I learned my lesson from then on. You don't show up late to practice. Especially that late. That was bad. Mm -hmm. That was so bad. Which is funny. I've showed up late to a couple of really important things before. Oh, gosh. That's another life lesson. I got away with it. Good to go. <laughs> Yikes. In the next episode, I'll tell you how to get away Yikes. with showing up late. Uh -huh. Maybe. We'll see. No, no, no. <laughs> or not showing up at all to something very important. Yeah. Should have I done that? Yes. Oh, I have. We'll leave that as a cliffhanger. We'll talk okay. about that next time. You don't like okay. talking about it, though. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I find it kind of funny. All right. Um, is that all you got? That's my life lesson. Set your alarm. Well, okay. That was kind of a disappointing lesson. Yeah, and apologize. I'd have apologize. To vote apologize. That my story was Tell better. I was wrong. I was in the wrong. I showed up way late. I was so sorry. I apologize, like, I think, like, a thousand times to whoever. I was like, I'm so sorry. I... I really, truly didn't mean it, obviously, because it wasn't like my intentions are to not show up to practice on time. Yeah. Uh -huh. That wasn't my intention. Uh -huh. It just sadly it just happened. happened. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm not convinced. <laughs> Roll back the tape. Roll back. Let's oh, see and don't happened. get an hour and a half of sleep a night. Try okay. to actually like get somewhat normal. But if it happens, if you only get an hour and a half of sleep, that's not an excuse to not do important things. Okay. Yeah. Like set your alarm for the next morning's practice. Got it. <laughs> set your alarm. <laughs> or you'll have to run sprints. Yeah. That applies to everything in life. It does. It does. Don't think about it too hard. <laughs> okay. What's our next segment? Practical tips. Okay. Practical tips with the nagels. Practical tips with the entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I I think you know let's try this for those listening on podcast. Um, I think this tip we gotta you're not gonna quite understand. So maybe we're gonna have to show it. So maybe we'll end the podcast here. And if you want to know what we're about to talk about, hop over to YouTube. Yeah. And watch. Because it's going to be a little too too difficult to explain without showing it. So, But you should give them a little teaser. A Just little a teaser. Little teaser. Okay. Wait, I need to come up with a riddle. Hold on. I'm not ready for this. <laughs> you don't have to give them a riddle. Okay. <clears throat> okay. We're, we're ready. All right. Day. So, it's too much pressure. All right. So, so Christmas shopping's coming up. As a Where is it going? As a e-commerce seller on Amazon, mm -hmm. I think I or both of us are pretty in tune with how to get the best steal. Deal and steal. <laughs> deal and steal. Mhm. Mm <laughs> when shopping on Amazon. And in I thought everybody knew this, but in talking to lots of different people, I don't think this is common knowledge. It's not. Uh, maybe if you already knew this, you can just, you know, stop watching us. Nah, you should probably still watch us. <laughs> yeah. But I think I've said too much. I think if you want to know more, hop onto YouTube. Yeah. And um, maybe we'll we'll put a little... Uh, We'll put a little link in the description so you can hop to this part of the video. You won't have to watch all five hours of this show. Or I think or, I think it just needs to be a separate. What separate? Okay. Like the little the thing where the tip. So I don't know how to do YouTube hmm. or podcast, so we're just gonna free for all it. Yeah. We'll see what happens. All right. According to Statista.com, about 50%, when you're shopping on Amazon, not all products are sold by Amazon themselves. There's a large proportion, approximately 50% or so, of sold items, 
according to this graph, that are sold by third-party sellers. That's what we are. We're one of those third-party sellers. So, not everything you buy is a product that Amazon owns. Amazon is a platform. the platform, yeah. the marketplace that helps those sellers market their items. So, what does that mean for you as a shopper? Amazon doesn't always display the cheapest price. Sometimes if you do a little digging, you can find a cheaper item. And we're going to show you how to do that. So right here, we've got an item that we've purchased before. Some uh, Bluetooth headphones. I love these. They're pretty good. They're uh, cheap and get the job done. So we just took a look at them. Let's take a look at the black. All right. So you can see you can buy it new for $38.99. Now, how do we see if there's a better deal? Most people. Well, who's selling it right now? Most people don't look any farther than this. If, the, if it's what they want, they click add to cart, buy it now, etc. Let's take a look at this. Down here, we can find out some information. This one ships from Amazon. Doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot to you as a buyer, but it is sold by Amazon. So Amazon owns this physical product and will be shipping it to you. But let's see if there's any cheaper deals. So come down here, usually scroll down and you can see in here, new and used 10 from $26 or are they displayed over here as well? So let's click on it, see what we can find. All right, so I wouldn't want to buy these headphones in used condition, but if you're interested, you could probably get a good deal. Right here, take a look at this one, used very good. Sometimes you don't know what that means, but the seller will add a little to the, to the description. So right here is a good deal. Item will come in original packaging, packaging will be damaged, cool. 27 bucks. That is uh, about $12 cheaper than the asking price if you don't mind to have a damaged packaging item. And this is sold by Amazon Warehouse. That is an item that Amazon owns. Amazon takes returns or damages and sends them to Amazon Warehouse. There's a lot of deals you can find there. Do that a lot. Right here, another Amazon Warehouse. So, if you don't mind damaged packaging, that right there will save you $12. Now, you can also filter if you only want items in brand new condition. Maybe it's a gift or something. Check it out. All right. So, we still got up here the list price, $38.99. But here's a couple that look cheaper to me. $23.50 plus $4.99 shipping. That's about uh, $28, $29.50, I think. $29.49. All right, sold by Keith DeAndre. <laughs> well, he's got one rating and it is one star. He's got 0% positive feedback. So maybe you'd want to skip that. Maybe not. You could take a look, click on his name, take a look at the rating. You know, if, if you don't mind, if you want to save a few bucks and you potentially don't mind an extra hassle, it could be worth the gamble. Here's why. Amazon's got your back. They always support their customers. So if you buy from this guy and it's some garbage, you're going to get your money back. But maybe you don't want to mess with that. Here's another guy. $31.99, $4.58 shipping. So that's about $36. That'll save you about 2 bucks. Now... It is sold by Wash Cooper. Pretty good rating, 87%. I'd buy from him. Probably won't have an issue. Should be good. If you don't mind potentially waiting a little longer. So, you know, this one's not an Amazon Prime, so it might not get there as quickly. But you could save 2 or $3. Add to cart, buy it. Boom. Let's take a look at a different color, too. Uh... Take a look at blue. 
see what it looks like. Okay, from 2424. Alright, so same normal asking price, 3898. Take a look at the new items. Look at that right there. 3299 arrives pretty quickly. Not prime shipping. Sell supply. Good rating and feedback. So you can use that on any Amazon listing. I do it every time I search to buy something on Amazon and give it a try. I'll, uh, I'll link these headphones in the description so you can take a look and see what we're talking about. One other thing, this is pretty cool. I just found it while I was looking up this. Amazon has promotions all the time to try to get you to buy gift cards and things. Right now, you can get a $5 Amazon credit when you put $30 worth of coins into one of those coin store machines. I don't know if we have $30 of coins, but <laughs> this goes until December 31st. So if you got coins lying around, go cash them in and get a $30 or more Amazon gift card and you can get a $5 credit. Pretty sweet. I think that's all we got here. We'll, we'll end this segment. Yeah, and we'll put all these links in the description so you can access that stat and then see the links to these couple things. So For sure. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Hopefully this is helpful to you as you prepare for the Christmas shopping season. And if you just missed Prime, Prime Day was last week. You just missed it. But I'm sure there'll be tons more of quarter four deals for online yes. shopping. So we'll, we'll, uh, Cyber Monday. If you like this tip, we got lots more like this for other websites. Thanks. Okay. So you just saw our how to on Amazon, but we'd like to thank you guys for tuning in. Um, check us out again. We post podcast videos and obviously podcasts every Wednesday. Every Wednesday? Every Wednesday. Okay. Every Wednesday. So let us know what you want us to talk about next. Yeah. Or maybe not the next video, but in future videos. We'll, we have a few ideas up our sleeve. But, you know, if you want to add along, we'd love to talk about whatever you'd like to hear. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, like. Okay, check. check. Comment. Comment. And then if you're watching or I guess listening via podcast, review us. Yeah. And download, subscribe. Awesome. On, pod on whatever podcast platform you're listening on. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Cue the cool music. Cue the, Cue cool. the cool music. <laughs> See ya.